All right, we're back here. Episode number seven, I think. Yeah. Six or seven. Six or seven. It's we'll been a few. Seven. Let's say seven is lucky. Let's say seven. Yeah, I, seven. I feel seven lucky. Seven feels good. Yeah. So today's guest is my friend Greg Carroll. He lives here in High River. He's like a musician of musicians in this part of the world. Um, we're going to talk today about touring on the road, making music, making albums, stuff like that. Making love. Making love to Snowbird <laughs> wives. <laughs> wives. <laughs> hey, I didn't know she was married, and that was years ago. It, was, it doesn't count, really. <laughs> when I lived in Moose Jaw. You can, it's not really even a notch on the headboard, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you teach guitar lessons and all this. You're the music man around here, as far as I can know. As far as, far as I can tell. So thanks for coming. Thanks, Wade. Alberta, awesome. appreciate it, man, for having me. Awesome. Um, yeah, I... I, I teach around locally as you know i've been teaching guitar and bass and theory and voice and stuff like that so um as well like i've been playing around well, how long have i been here now 15 years i think i've been living here now that was another question i wanted yeah, to figure 15, out yeah 15 years i lived in turner valley and i was teaching actually at uh, in the back of bradley's western where with mel wilson at the time before yeah. the store so that's and i was here all the time and it just made sense to move here because i was driving from turner valley all the time you're here every night anyways you know what i mean so or every I was day teaching and i was you know i was gigging all the time so it just made sense to move and turner valley is a nice community but it's a bedroom community so once you start having kids and gets old driving to okotoks for everything all the time right so yeah, yeah. so it was it wasn't a, a hard decision and um Mer bought the house back and during the boom so it was like a, you know bidding war it's like you know bidding war in the house paid the like most crazy possible time. amount of money for it and yeah. now there's like so many homes for sale you can't even give them away like you know but anyway yeah, that's that's the I we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about the economy we're not gonna bring everyone down so here well <laughs> greg was nice enough to bring this today this is the new new album and we'll touch on when it came out and all that stuff but black mountain whiskey rebellion and uh the one track i really like is uh, Wolves at the Door and the Holy Smoke. And I have listened to the other ones because they weren't recently released until Friday, right? Friday, Appalachian Entrepreneur was released. Um, so give us give us the uh, lowdown on this new album. The band is uh, as, as you know it. Well, I almost got to like, detail this out here a bit. So yeah. that's me. I'm very handsome. The good looking the, guy. The most there. handsome person in the band. <laughs> you know, the other guys are, you know. Yeah, They're right. kind of handsome, but not not yeah. super handsome. <laughs> That's Corbett Fraz, one of my favorite drummers and human beings in the world. I've been playing with him for about 20 years. Uh, we were together with uh, an artist named Chad Brownlee. And this guy here, Mitch Merritt, was Chad Brownlee's manager and guitar player. So this is how incestuous it became kind of deal. Um, and Eric Dillon is our singer from Kansas originally. Um, and now he lives in Nashville. Uh, he's has the number one right now. Like he's a, a published songwriter. He has a pub deal. Oh, nice. So nice. he's he writes with Luke Combs and like and he has a number one in Canada, number one in the states, I do believe. So he's doing all right. Rocking. He's doing all right, you know. And um, and this member actually left. So <laughs> he's out. <laughs> he's out. <laughs> um, great guy, great player, but it wasn't for him. So anyway, we uh, got together. I was at the CCMA's a couple of years back, and Mitch asked me to go into his hotel room, and uh, and I don't mean it like that. Half of the show, you know, and you know, it was it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you weren't there. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, "Hey, man, I got all these here tracks for this band." And I was there with Chad Brownlee at the time, and um, this wasn't even on my radar. Like joining a band, like I've been a side guy my whole career. And like joining a band, like, this is wow. like the first band you've been an actual legitimate an actual member of. Member of, oh, right, so, you know, I've been doing this since 1987. You know, when I was <clears throat> 16 years old. Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> give my my age here, but um, just Mitch played me the tracks. Back. He just played me the demos, and I I immediately fell in love with it. And it's Mitch Merritt and Eric Dillon, um, predominantly doing the songwriting. Clayton Bellamy, a good friend of mine, a good friend of the bands as well. Clay actually sang on Holy Smoke um, and wrote a lot of the songs as well. Um, so it was really started like a buddy band. Like, you know, all, we've all known each other a long time. And, uh, you know, we, we lied on front of traffic for each other. And it finally came together. And it, and it came together. Yeah. And we recorded it at OCL Studios in January of last year. Where's and, that at? Uh, it's up by Langdon. Okay. That old Chester me right that way. And so we could stay there as well which is cool so it was like almost like the, you know the 70s all over again where it's like we we're like you know we get up in the morning and go down to the studio 
you know, and, and record all day long from like 10. And, and it, it wasn't like what people think. Oh, it was, you, recording is so, you know, so much fun. It's like, no, it's not. It's, it's a lot it's of hard work. work. It's a lot of hard work. Long days. Long, long, long days. You got to put up with everybody. And, yeah, and, be and, nice. your, and yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Worst thing you got to put up with yourself. <laughs> right? So we went in and we slammed these out. I don't know how many songs we got here anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight songs. We nailed it out in about... I think it was about four or five days we were there kind of deal. I think four days, something like that. Still a long time to, for a group of people to be in the same place. Yeah. A few days, yeah. Yes. Um, but we had, there's lots of laughs. Um, like I said, we, we generally like each other, you know, yeah. and, and musically, personally. So, it, you know, it wasn't hard for us to, to get together and, and have fun and, and, and do a kick-ass record. Like, this is, like, I'm very proud of this record. It's a really good oh, record. Oh, I think it's fantastic. And, I, love, um, I love that song. I love where it... It starts off, and then he just it it belts it out, and then it calms down again and belts it out. I like I like music or songs like that. Yeah, thank you. It's it's like I said, it was a labor of love, and what I liked about it as well, we were all in a room together. So usually when you record, there's a process involved, and the old way of doing it was when all the guys sat in the studio together, and looked at each, could see the whites of each other's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, that's not so much done anymore. Now it's like bass and drums go in with a you know ghost guitar track and a ghost vocal track, and you just lay it down, and everyone layers it on top of that. Well, we did it old school, kind of like the band. Yeah. We were in the same room together. We communicated, and we laid everything down, and then you know put all the beds down together. And then we layered layered the tracks. In other words, that we laid you know okay, here's a guitar solo, here's some harmonies and stuff like that. Hand then you claps, start adding those on that. Adding, okay, exactly. I got it's you. kind of like, you know, the, you know, putting icing on the cake kind yeah, of deal, right? Yeah. You don't start off with the icing, you start off with the batter, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah like that, the, the, making that album was, was, it was a lot of fun, a lot of good memories. Um, it's doing pretty well for us, considering we, we were not releasing the radio and we had this conversation in Alberta before we got on to do this. It's like, you know, radio trackers, you guys are great, but you guys are expensive. Yeah, and, I didn't uh, even know the radio tracker really was till today, but yeah, that's cool. Right. Sure. So, like, that's just so we're just doing total streaming, and very proud to say that Holy Smoke has over a million streams. That's awesome. That that's like I never thought for, that's, that that's, was going to happen. That's that's the that's the milestone that everybody wants to hit. A million, million streams. streams. That's right. And, you, and you're doing it. That's awesome. So, and the other, and, and of course, we have other releases as well. Um, Holy Smoke was it came out. Like you know what I mean? It, it was uh, it, with ferocity. It just it just it just leapt into people's minds immediately because it's a cool story about this preacher who wanted to keep his church going. So what he did, he started putting weed into Bibles and selling the Bibles. So that's that, holy smoke. Holy there smoke! You go. Right? I got it now. Yeah. <laughs> Open up the Book of Life. Everything you yeah. need rolled up inside. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So great lyrics, boys. Um, but yeah, like that was exciting. Like when that came out, the other releases were as poignant as that. And like, I mean, just with streams kind of deal. Yeah. Still, you know, we average about 2,000 streams a day. Like yeah, that's, that's pretty good for a band who nobody really knows who we are kind of deal. But they, but they, they want to know. Growing who we are. with popularity as every day goes by. That's good. Yeah, you know, and sure. we formed this band because, you know, we want, we're always, always consummate side guys. Like I said, I was with Chad Browning for seven and a half years. Amos Garrett for 16 years. Yeah. You know, um, st a lot of time with artists and, and no regrets, but it's, this is really cool. It's like, you know, you actually have a say, right? Exactly. You know, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? It's like, oh, my opinion actually Ownership, matters. Ownership, so, really, you know, yeah. yeah. Which is which is cool. And 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 that's the thing is like, there's, like Mitch is our, our fearless leader. You know, someone has to lead the man, right? You know what I mean? Someone's got to be the boss. Someone's got to, someone's got to do it. And yeah. Mitch does all of that. He does a lot of the heavy lifting. Like, you know, he's, you know, for M, he works for MDM, of course. He is MDM himself and Mike Danny are MDM. Uh, that's our record label, which is based out of Toronto. Mitch lives in Vancouver. So I guess, you know, there's representation in Vancouver yeah. as well. Um, but Mitch is really good at, you know, okay, He's been like he made Aaron Pichette a star, like you know, to hold my beer guy. Hold my beer, <laughs> yeah. Um, so like he knows he's been in the business a long time, but our approach is completely different than from an artist because like I guess we don't have a radio track. We're doing streaming. We're not doing radio tours. You know any kind of deal like going to a radio station at six o'clock in the morning. Hey there, hi there, ho there. You yeah, know, kind of yeah. deal, right? And it's like you just want to be in bed, but you got to smile and, and pretend you like everyone, including yourself which you don't at six o'clock in the morning, but, uh, nobody likes anything yeah. <laughs> early in the day. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So it, it works. It works it really well. You know, we we have our uh, our singer uh, is uh, is American, and he has that southern drawl, which is really cool for this kind of music that we're doing. Important, right? Yeah. You know what I mean. And he's a kick-ass dude as well. Yeah. Um, so we all get along. We we have you know we were on tour with Cadillac Three. I forgot to mention that to you before. Okay. So we went up with Cadillac Three, and they're kick-ass dudes as well. Really good band. And we went up with those guys in September for a couple of weeks and did uh, Montreal and Toronto. Like we played spots that were country is not a hotbed. Right. You know, if you want to consider us a country band, it's the other thing. I don't even know if you can consider us a country band. Like, you know, because it definitely has some <clears throat> country like notes to it or whatever, but it's pretty heavy too. Yeah. It's, it's I, I like the thing. It's like Leonard Skinner yeah. meets Steve Earle yeah. kind yeah. of deals, like how it would describe us kind of deals. So. Um, actually, we do have a Steve Earle song on here called Fixing to Die. It's actually, actually a Buka White tune, okay? Buka I know White. Buka White's old blues guy. And um, Steve Earle, you know, he recorded it. And then um, Eric Dillon, our singer and one of our songwriters, of course, um, he's friends with Steve Earle. So, like, talks with him and stuff like that. Cool. And recorded the Steve Earle song and stuff like that, which is, which is cool. And, and I don't know whose idea it was for Fixing to Die, but I'm... Like, that's one of my favorite tracks on the album, which we haven't released yet. But Yeah, I'm going to have to listen to more Fixing the Die is, is pretty cool, and it's, you know, his story is all about, well, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's very tragic in a sense. It's, this man <laughs> follows his car to the hotel, and it's his wife's in the car with her lover. Oh, yeah. And then uh, while they're doing her thing, he just goes in and blows my way. There you go. Right. So he shoots them all dead, and then he goes to jail. Fixing to die. Fixing to die. Yeah. Reckon that I'm going to hell. There you go. Right, so like yeah. you know what I mean. So like that's that's the I'm fixing to die, reckon that I'm going to hell. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean. It's a very powerful song. It's a very powerful song. And, Deep, uh, dark, powerful. It's definitely yeah. right. Yeah. And he's man. He knows he's going to be. He's going to be. So he he killed someone. Now he knows he's going to be killed. Yeah, he's and gonna, and he and he's pay okay, the piper. But he's okay with that. Like he's you ready. know, the, the characters. He was totally ready. He sounds like he's very unrepentant too. Right, you know. So. Um, and that's kind of the way this band is. We're kind of unrepentant. Right? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, we're kind of doing our own thing. We're not paying attention to anyone. Like we were at the CCMAs uh, last year to unveil the band, you know, yeah. and we did it. Uh, MDM always has a showcase party, uh, the MDM party, to showcase their artists. And we were, we fell under that. So we, we, you know, we did it and it was a lot of people like we're just kind of, you know, What's those guys doing over there? <laughs> kind of deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got a bunch of people that are kind of poking us, like with a ten-foot stick, you know, little ways like, away, you know, little ways there. away. Well, I don't know what these guys are. They bite, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it, it's it it is exciting, like to be doing something like this. It's it's a band that I think a lot of musicians, like you know, we already got so many offers of them. Was like, I want to be in your band. I want to be in your band. We're like, of course you do. That, that's why yeah. we formed this. It's that oh, it's the band that you want to be part of. I think deal, it's exciting, right? very exciting. So, and, and like I said, we, there could be a, uh, could be other stuff coming up here. I don't want to get, there could be another tour in the fall. There could be, you know. Um, Mitch is uh, working hard on, on that, this kind of stuff. That's, you know, he's, uh, he's the hybrid musician slash businessman kind of deals. Yeah. And, and he's, you know, it's good to have a guy like that in, in the band. Like I said, someone's got to look, someone's got to take if care of the don't, shop. If you right? don't have a guy like that in the band, then you hire like an agent. Is well, how we, we, we do have an agent um, kind of deal, but a manager, I think is the, that's the term you're looking at. And Mitch is, is managing us, but at the same time, it's not like, it's not like when he was managing Chad where, you know, here, here's a decision and that's it. Like, you know, we, we all have a say in what's going on, like I said, so, which is... You run it by cool. the gang and everybody goes, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, no, maybe. And sometimes there, there's not enough time to call up four or five guys and say, what do you think about this? And he has to make now. a decision now and then, and then tell us about it after. And it's co totally cool. It's like, yeah, okay, hey, man, I, I, I trust you. I get it. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, that, that's the thing. You got to keep, keep her rolling, right? So Totally, totally. Where, uh, so you're on this tour, how, like, from one end of Canada to the other, or just Western um, Canada? Or? We were supposed to do cross Canada, but um, after crunching the numbers, it wasn't worth doing Western Canada because the price of gas and, you know... Like, like BC? Like, like, you know, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like $2.05 in Surrey. You know, my God. Um, we did around a golden horseshoe. Like I said, the tour we did was Ontario and Quebec. Okay. Um, so close proximity. Like I said, the longest drive we had 
was from Montreal to Toronto, I do believe. You right? guys got the big rock star bus, or do you got a couple of vans, or how do you guys oh, roll? Oh, man, it's so funny. It's like we were, we were always, you know, I guess when we were with Chad and, and, and other artists as well, there was always a tour bus, right? So it's so, And we've all lived in tour buses for an extended amount of period of time, with Corvette Fraz being road hammers. Small, you know, Mitch, small space and, and, at the end of the day, and, right? and, and myself, like we've all spent time with various other groups on tour buses yeah. and stuff like that. This tour, we were in suburbans, black suburbans. We looked like we were like pimps, you know, kind of deal. You know, white you the big rims on them, white pimps, <laughs> with black suburbans, <laughs> honky pimps. We were honky pimps, <laughs> cracker pimps, uh, and then black, black suburbans. Right? We were chasing behind their tour bus, right? So I'm, I'm just like laughing, like how many times That's were we tough. in That's the awesome. bus and someone chasing <clears throat> us, and now like here we are, middle aged men, and now we're starting all over again. Yeah, you know. Starting all over again is going to be rough. You know? It's going to be <laughs> tough. <yeah. laughs> so, but yeah, we did. We actually, we played markets, like I said, I mentioned before, that generally do not dig like anything associated with country music. And we actually did quite well in, in Montreal, which is a, you know, that's, that's a tough market. For anywhere. sure. That's a tough market to break into, man. You know, yeah, for anything. Probably. Exactly. Exactly. And Toronto, we played the... Did you uh, Fogwa when you were there? Have any what, sorry? Fogwa? Foigwa? No, no, I did not. A little duck liver? But I did see the St. Lawrence, and it is full of sewer. It's yeah. full of shit, right? Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah, it That's is. nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And their infrastructure in Montreal is falling down because they're all mobbed up, right? So, like, oh, I, yeah. think, I think Daddy Trudeau Nothing did Nothing happens unless the mob says right. it's okay right. there. Right, you know what I mean? So, yeah. it's like, you know, that's why their overpasses are, like, driving under an overpass in Montreal. You're like, this is my last time. This I have no be, regrets. Right? This could be it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go there in uh, June 8th. I'm planning on going there with my friends from Vancouver. Island. We're going to go and eat at uh, Joe Beef Restaurant and a couple other restaurants. Oh, right on. Montreal is awesome. I, I've heard it's great, so I've never it been. It is. Yeah. Montreal's really good. I like to go out and it's always good food and stuff like that, right? And, yeah, for sure. But yeah, we did Montreal, we did Ottawa, we did Toronto. Um, we played the Opera House in Toronto, actually, which nice. is really cool. Which is a really cool venue. And I can't remember who was there before us. I think it was Metallica or something like that. So it was you perfect. Know, you know, it was, uh, and it was well attended. Um, uh, Kitchener, we think we did. Yes, we did do Kitchener. We did, uh, London was actually awesome. A really good show in London. Uh, that sticks out with me. I've always liked London. Um, Ontario, of course. Yeah, I've never been there. Um, it's, it's, it's a cool. Days. It's a cool. I, I like. I like London, right? Because it's like, it's like surrounded by farmland, but it's a city. It's it's you know what I mean. It's it's really cool. Um, so so we did well there as well. We actually I think we sold most most of our merch. You know, we we sold there. Um, Are you selling these and CDs or just these? To, we're just doing albums, old school, and of course they has a. Uh, download oh, card, right. digital right, download right. card on here as well, right? So, um, yeah, but CDs, like that's the cost of making a CD. It's not worth CDs it. CDs are out. I haven't bought, they're, when's the last time you bought a CD? They're, they're, you know, that's the they're whole gone. thing. I, I use them for coasters, you know what I mean, kind of deal. All the records that I played Four on over the years, people. I just use them as coasters. And here you go. You want to put that in your Close coffee? Them down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, think about it. They're, the CDs are gone. Shopping malls are going to be gone. That's right. They're history. Things you know, are, things are coming different. Well, it's a shut-in's paradise, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's coming to, right? I don't mm. have to leave my house. Let's go on my magical yeah. device and order. Everything will come know? to the door or over the wire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but no, we're just doing albums. Um, vinyl is coming back. Like I got a turntable and, and I, I play yeah. vinyl all the time now. I've got a wicked collection back at the farm. I must have, I don't know, like this many, this many records. <laughs> Back yeah. of the farm, I'll have to get them back on track. Right on. Get the old tur turntable out and make There's it happen. There's nothing more, you know, peaceful than you hear. It's like, oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming. I wanted to ask you about uh, guitar lessons. You've been teaching like half the country how to play around here, like Chris Chataway and did Mark Parsons do a little Mark, bit? Mark Parsons as well. Mark still yeah, we had it. He was yeah, our second guest. He's yeah. awesome. Mark is cool. Dude, He's sure. really picked it up, picked up the game and going pretty hard. Yeah, he he, he doesn't screw around. You yeah, know, like yeah. that's 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 the way he you know and chat away as well. Like those guys, you know, there's there's no secret to this stuff. It's like if you if you practice, you're gonna get good, right? That's you know what I mean? Problem. It, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, you were my student for what? We had one lesson, <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> yeah, I give up quick. <laughs> but Not yeah, how many how many students do you think you usually on average? And I know it's 
it's hard to tell, but on average, over a year, do you teach? Um, it, it, it fluctuates, but it's around 15. It's, it's okay. not, not a crazy amount. Um, not, not, like I said, it's not like it was before. Like before, I had like 25 students, but then... That was full-time teaching. You know, That's how you made your living. Yeah. Now you make your living doing a few other different things. Well, right? I was actually... I was Even when I was teaching, I was still... Music's always been my living, right? I've always okay. made, made, made a living with music. So um, uh, even when I taught... Um, like even when I had 25 students, I was still touring. I was with Amos, you know what I mean? Kind of deal or Chad or Lindsay L or like this, you know, the, yeah. the list goes on kind of deal. So, um, it's always good because of gigs. It's kind of like a, a good security net, you know what I mean? Kind of deal. For, and a musician needs that because, you know, we're not going to have That's how you make ends meet. Right. I, ma- I imagine it's paid a lot of bills over the years. Yes. Yeah, teaching, teaching yes. people how to play one hour at a time. Yeah. Over the over every week they stop by for one lesson or two lessons yeah. or whatever it takes, right? And I really enjoy it because it's the thing of it is is like um like I have one student who just he just started to play. I think I've had him for two months now, a couple months, and he just now he's actually starting to play. Like, you know, play along with songs. And he's loving it. And he's loving it. Yeah. And it makes me proud because I'm seeing this and I'm going, Yeah, that's that's cool. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's like I'm 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 creating something, right? Like and I'm, I'm, I'm molding into, right. Yeah. They're like putty in my hands, right? I can get there and mold them, right? So it's it's pretty That's awesome, cool. and and you know, like the, how I teach is is basically like how do you want to like do you want to be a rock star? Do you want to play in front of people? Do you just want to be in your basement? Do you want to you, do you wanna be like, the campfire guy? Do you want to you know, be the yeah, party guy? Exactly. Yeah, who and do you want to be? Here? Then I put then I put them whoever it is on the proper path, right? Kind of deal. So yeah. it's like no, I I just want to play in my basement. I was like, okay, so here's the approach we're gonna do. It's like, you know, I want to play in front of people. Okay, it's a different approach, right? You know what I mean? So different, different psychology. Does anybody show right. up and say, I want to be a rock star? Like, I want to, like, uh, I want to be playing in a concert in one year from now. Like, they got some yes. big goals like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's do yeah. it. And, uh, and, then, and then there's a reality check after about a month for the lessons, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're, like, you're like, so how's it going so far? Right. I was like, fuck, this right. is taking forever. Right. This isn't, it this isn't going as fast as I thought it would be. Here. It takes time, yeah. man. It really does. Um, but the thing of it is, is that when you, it, it, as a teacher, there's not, not a prior, there's not a prouder moment than see your student up on stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and it's best, especially if they came in and didn't want to do that and then they get bit by the bug, you know, and they want to perform. People have been hounding them. They're like, get up, get up on the stage and do it. I remember watching Chris Chataway play f- for the first time. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. I was just like, cool. And he is. He's like super nervous and su- super right. like worried, and mm-hmm. I was like, and now he he just walks up on stage yeah, like it's nothing. Let's do it, right? No problem. Was, you know, so and that and that's the thing is like the more you do it, obviously it's like anything. You know what I mean? The more confidence you're going to get, the better you're going to get at it. The yeah. more you're going to enjoy it, right? Confidence is probably once you know how to do it, don't know how to play the guitar. Confidence is probably the next battle, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's a big thing, especially for, for performing. You need confidence for performing. You really do. You know. Was there a time in your early life when you're playing that you got like these offers to come play in a band or play with other uh, musicians and, and you're like totally like this is not my thing and then one day it changed or, or were you always cool with it? I grew up in a musical family. I grew up um, Irish. You know, um, so like fighting every, Irish, fi- oh, fighting, drinking, you smoking bet. Irish. You betcha. Um, so every Sunday, of course, after church, <laughs> we had Catholic, right after church, right after Catholic, you know, Catholic, right? You know, the Catholic guilt got to go to church and then, you know, go to grandma and gra- grandpa's place. I, we didn't call them that, but anyway, <laughs> grandma and grandfather. And they were, um, well, good or gone now, but they were, they were musicians as well. Like, nice. like there's, uh, my grandmother, um, like there's a video of her with Anita Best, um, you know, singing a song like at a festival in downtown St. John's. You know, my, my grandfather sang as well. Um, so I, I and all my aunts and uncles, like you know, my uncles were musicians. Actually, my, my, one of my uncles still is. Like he's almost 80 years old. And he's still gigging. Still, still, still gigging. Still hitting giving the her, pavement. Right. You, you know what I mean. So I like that. So I had. You know, I walk in and everyone's playing guitar and singing and smoking and drinking. And I'm like, okay. In the this, kitchen, this back is, in the this, old this days. This is cool, yeah. right? You know, so I, I grew up with music and I was on, I started taking guitar lessons. So I even, you know, everyone takes guitar lessons. <laughs> You're never too good to take guitar lessons. Yeah. You don't come out of the womb playing guitar. 
So I took guitar lessons and and because uh, I wanted to be as good as my uncle's kind of deal. And um, and by the time I was ten years old, I was on. I did my first gig. I was playing in front of my um, my community of, of St. George's, Newfoundland. That's where I'm originally from. So it was like the whole town came out in this in the gymnasium. So when I was ten years old, singing "Wasn't That a Party." <laughs> Wasn't that a party? <laughs> right, the, the Irish, Irish Rovers. Rovers. Yeah, right. I love that song. So they talking about getting drunk. A ten-year-old singing about getting drunk. So the crowd thought it was pretty funny, and I loved it. I just loved the attention. I wasn't nervous at all, like at all. Like I've, you know, that's the thing I get. Like even to this day, you grew I, up. I, with I, it. I, I don't. I don't get. I've never gotten stage fright in my life. Good. Like, and I, and uh, I, I really pity people who do. And I know people who get horrendous stage fright, and. Uh, like I feel really bad for him, um, but for myself, that's never been an issue. You get a few butterflies, and I've always said this is like before a show. If you don't have a few butterflies in your stomach, it's time for you to get out of it. Yeah, you're not right? excited. You, you're, you're not excited you're, anymore. You've lost, yeah, you've right? lost that. And I'm proud to say that I haven't. I've yet to do a show where there was no butterflies. There was always a couple of them bouncing around in there. That's good. Yeah. Right. So that means it's working. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and like and. And it doesn't matter like what it is, like there's different levels of, of pressure, like whether you're doing like the CCMAs or, you know, some kind of award show or something like that. And then, or if you're doing like a live, a live TV thing, like I remember doing that years ago, we were opening up for Dean Brody. As long as with Chad Browning, we were playing in Truro, Nova Scotia. It was the Coors Banquet thing. And we were, and it was live. The truck was there. And, you know, there was a, there was, there were a few more butterflies floating around. Mm-hmm during that kind of time because there's there's no room for for mistakes like you can't make an you can't no make air, a mistake no, there's no, no room for no, error no room for error at all yeah. right you know and there, there never is anyway right like you know even like you know my approach when I'm, whenever I'm on stage is is I pretend I'm in the studio so you you know so you want to play your best that you can you don't want to go back and make you don't want to make a mistake mm-hmm. and actually um Paul McCartney's drummer uh, has the same kind of philosophy he's like you know but he plays in front of 120,000 people because it's a beetle, you know, but he, yeah. his approach is, yeah, I just, I approach it like I'm in a studio. And when I remember reading an interview that he had and I went, wow, I, th- I think the same way, you know, it's like, there's no, like, there's no room for error. What's like, yeah. what already said before, like you just, it's, it's really unacceptable. Like, you know, a guy makes a mistake, he makes a mistake. You don't try and make a mistake. And usually when a really good player makes a mistake, there's, there's a smirk, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if a guy makes a mistake again, it's kind of a, hmm? You know what I mean? It's like, pull, your, pull your shit together. Well, what's yeah, going on yeah, here, buddy? Yeah. You know, so, um, but yeah, like anyway, performing, uh, I've been doing it all my life. Like I, so for myself, it's like, there's no stage fright or there are some butterflies, which is, it's, which is natural, but yeah, that's good. I, I just love it. I read, I read a book a while back. It was called Outliers. Um, the, the author doesn't come to me right now, but they had a, Think about 10,000, if you do something for 10,000 hours, like you give yeah. it an honest kick at the can, you're not just like daydreaming about it, but actually practicing like uh, musicians or uh, um, artists of any kind. Or I always talk about welding or right. pilots. Like right. you're not going to hire a pilot that has 500 hours. They want a pilot that has 5,000 hours. Exactly. So the 10,000 hour rule to become an expert is something. The Beatles got that when they were really young in Liverpool or whatever. It was, that was Hamburg when they were playing like 12 hours a day every 12 day. 12 hours a day every right. day, yeah. That's, that's how they became really good. Yeah. Like it wasn't like they just uh, had some natural ability to be the to become the Beatles. They, they, they invested their time well before they became popular, right? Well, absolutely. It's like, you know, I read this book. Here, There, and Everywhere by Jeff Emmerich, who was the first engineer from uh, Revolver, right up, um, up right up to Paul McCartney's stuff. Right. And he, he said, you know, he summed up the Beatles like, <clears throat> just as you were talking about, it, it, you know, the, it was a lot of hard work. He said, part genius, and he said, a lot of hard work. Right? So they had to tell him. You got to have a little bit of genius. You got to yeah. have a little bit of luck on your side, like yeah. a touch of it. But the hard work will pay off, and, guaranteed. And right? it always does. It always, yeah. it always, always does. If you look at any bands out there that are successful, you know what I mean? Like, it, it wasn't given to them. It wasn't an accident. It, it wasn't an Like, they were, you know, yes, there's a the right place at the right time. That, it, that happens with everyone, but it, you, you got to have the goods. You are there the naturally bat, right? talented guitar players that, like, they can learn to play it in a few days, or is it actually going to take them a, Everybody takes a long time. It always Some takes, are just better than others. You know, unless you're like a Mozart, like, you know, you're a prodigy kind of deal, right? You know? Do they like, exist? Uh, Was there modern day... I, you know, like that's, that's the one thing is like, you know, the last time anyone made a stink about a guitar player was 
was a guy named Jeff Healy because he was blind and he, and he played it, you know what I mean, differently. And that's, yeah. you know, thinking about it now, like nobody's... Played it flat, right? Yeah, yeah, like nobody's really made a stink about a guitar player, you know. Well, then again, it's been, it's like, a, while. It's been a long time. Hendrix, of course, right? You know, how are you going to beat Hendrix? My God, you know what I mean? The pioneer. Left, right. You know what I mean? Switch, it was whatever, incredible, yeah. right? So, but yeah, that's a good point. I never never thought about that but like a modern there, day yeah, yeah, no, yeah nobody's making any kind of a stink at all about you know wow you got to hear this guy or whatever um like you know i just think it's it's common like not, not i mean like not be genius common but i mean it's, it's common these days for you know especially technology and you can youtube anyone mm -hmm. um you know like you, you can like that's the thing is like you can become a, a good guitar player with some lessons and it's it's that's what i'm saying like i i and a good imagination. Yeah, like it's, it's probably more more important than anything. Yes, right? I I bump into a lot of really good guitar players. I play with a lot of really good guitar players. Um, you know, like that's the thing. You don't want to play with anybody who's bad. But like at the same time, I don't know of a bad guitar player. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? They're all like, trying right? hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's all about the work. It's all about the work ethic and guys who are better than other guys. There's no secret to it. It's like yeah, there, there's talent, but it's it's also how much time did you put into that thing? Yeah. You know, like I, get, I totally get it. Right. So. Yeah. And every day it's like, you know, it's, it's still like, you know, I'm, I'm an older musician now kind of deal. So I don't practice as much as I used to. Like when I practice, you know, whenever I got a gig coming up, but you know, when you're younger, you know, you're, you're on that thing. Like you got to be on that thing. Like I was eight hours a day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like it was like that's a job. What it, that's what it took. To and that's what it took. Without right? that you know what I mean? commitment, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have made her. That's right. Yeah. You know, so like, that's the thing. I gotcha. Have you ever taken any big breaks and then is like kind of having to not necessarily start all over again, but I know I've taken big breaks from welding, like three months even. And it's like, oh man, the first day, like I forgot how to do this, but it comes back quickly. I did take a break actually. I, I, um, uh, I have a degree in music. I went to St. Francis Xavier University and studied music. And then I got out of that in 96 when I graduated <clears throat> and uh, went on the road. I came out, came out West. Yeah. And I was like, wow, it was, and at the time, you know, it was booming out here. It was, what year was that again, sir? Uh, 96. Oh, yeah, it'd be rocking. And, and it was rocking. six nights a week, right? So you, you played Monday to Saturday, you tore down, you, and you drove that night to go to the next gig. Then you set on up on move. Sunday, right? And I did that from 96 to 99, and I got burnt out. Because I remember with the band we were with, I was with called Stone Cold Country, actually. And a bunch of degenerates, basically. Stone cold kind of. Yeah, I think yeah. I remember them oh rolling God. through town <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> oh, you would we would remember us for sure. We were like I said, a bunch of misfits for sure. <laughs> but anyway, I remember doing that, and I was burnt out. Like after like three years of doing that, I uh, I said I, I gotta I gotta get out of this. Like I, I need a break. I need a break. I, or I need to totally get out. I, I gotta. So, um, it was it was it was time. So I. I I was living in Moose Jaw at the time, actually, and uh, and it was it was okay. It's time to get back to Alberta, you know, and uh, figure out what I'm gonna do next here because I'm done. I'm done with the road. I need a break. I need a break yeah. from music. I just need a job, right? So I got a job in a music store, and for uh, and I've, I've I think I can count on this hand how many day jobs I've had, and I won't even get up to five fingers. Yeah, you know, that kind of deal. That's cool. Um, so I was working in a, in a music store, uh, West Edmonton Mall, Miss Entertainment, and this guy walked in, like I said, I, I would preface before by saying I'm from Newfoundland, and he had a Newfoundland shirt on, and I just started talking to him, talking about right place at the right time, and he's like, he found out I had a degree in music, because he noticed my X-ring, and uh, we, you know, we start talking and stuff like that, and he's like, well, I'm looking for a teacher, he said, up in high level. High level. We need a music Wait, teacher. Where's that? <laughs> and I'm like, I I played there before. I'm like, it's I know. I, I used to play up, up there. All, yeah, it's it's eight hours north of Edmonton, eight hours south of, of Yellowknife. Yeah. Right. Right so, in the middle of God's country. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I all of a sudden I'm on a bus. Like I do an interview. The principal drives down. She does an interview with me. And then all of a sudden I'm on a bus and I'm going up to high level. And then I find myself in front of like the high school. Like I taught work? grade five to grade twelve music. Oh, nice. So I walk in and I got grade fives first thing in the morning and I'm standing up they're looking at me and I'm looking at them like, what the hell is going on here? Right. You know, so I did that for six <laughs> months. I didn't like having a boss. Like I didn't like the politics of the school teachers. Like, you know, your first year teacher, you make shitty money and you're treated like shit. Right. And, um, and yeah, how about let's right? get treated good and get paid good. Yeah. We, let's, let's get over the bullshit. You know, yeah. and that was the thing. It's like, so, you know, the, the guys who were teaching for 10 years that you're, you're like nothing right to them. 
So I, I really didn't like the attitude uh, of uh, teachers are also cheap, like really cheap, miserably cheap. I just get on my nerves too. Like just go, go to, just go to a bar and it's like they're all talking about how they got no money. It's like. You, I'm a first year teacher. You got you got no money, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I, I did that. Sounds I, like I, pipe fitters in my world. Oh God! And, but terrible, I just terrible I, human beings. I just did not like the the politics at all. I just you know what I mean. I had a de- deputy superintendent coming in, superintendent, pr- vice principal checking up on me and stuff like that, and you know. You gotta check out the long hair, you know. And on the weekends, I was partying with all the st- students' uh, moms <laughs> and dads, <laughs> and I get reprimanded all the time. Mister Carroll to the office every Monday morning, and I high five like, <clears throat> like it's any of their business what you do on the weekend. And that was right? a thing. That's you know, what I would. That's know, what I. There was say. one time I bought pot off a off an Aboriginal in, in, in the bathroom. You know what I mean? So I bought a few joints, and, yeah. and the vice principal's so. there. So what's the big deal? Like this is Saturday. Yeah, Saturday I'm not night. on the clock here. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, you know, so Mr. Carroll to the principal's office every Monday morning. And I go down, I high five all, all the tough kids who are, you know, ready to go in as well. And, you know, so they talk to me and I'm like, okay, I'm a human being, right? You know, and it's like, well, Mr. Carroll, you're, you're hitting on, you know, young Stefan's mom. I'm like, well, she's single. And she's 30. <laughs> she's 30. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah what? You know, like, this yeah. is, you know, and is that any of your business? Consensual, it's not rape. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> right? Like, what, what's the yeah. problem here? Right? Yeah, it you know shouldn't I mean? be any issue at all. None of, their, none of their fucking exactly, business to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I didn't like any of that. And they actually wanted me to come, they actually wanted me to sign another contract on. And I said, yeah, the hell with see that. See you later, alligator. And, and you're in high level. I yeah. was in high level. And I went out with a bang, too, because, like I said, that principal, I didn't like her. I can't remember her name. And oh, I, she was like Hitler, man, like a female Hitler. She was brutal, nasty, and everyone was scared of her. I wasn't. Nice. I wasn't scared of her at all. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't like the fact I wasn't scared of her. That's what so, she was. She's probably uh, really pissed off about that more than anything. Oh, yeah, but I got her good. I got that bitch good because what I did, <laughs> I got all the tough kids, and I, got super, I bought super soakers the last day of school and a bunch of eggs. Oh. And I said, okay, I want, I want you guys up on the top roof here. Snipers up there. Yep, and I want, okay, I want this... They, artillery over here yeah, yeah. and uh, they destroyed the school like they destroyed the school and it was parents walking by and like you know they were getting egged and oh yeah and then proper good and I could hear the click clock click clock coming down the hallway as I'm walking Mr. Carroll and I just went you know what the Hitler ass I went go fuck yourself I'm out of here I'm out of here right you know, I mean? you know what I mean so, you know fuck you good for right? you and that was it and I walked out and it was like, you know what I mean, kind of deal. And it was like, I swear there was applause. I could swear I heard applause from somebody. <laughs> but that was the break that I took, and I, I just had enough. Yeah. And then I realized I was on the other side of it with the responsible job. And, and, and I hated that. I, I, I like teaching. But Responsibility I, I, is tough. But eh? I had, you know, it's just, you know, like that's the other thing, too. I can never be a teacher today because there's no respect for teachers teachers it's totally it, changed it's totally changed now like you know what i mean teachers po- teachers and politicians 50 years ago 30 years ago politicians had respect from everybody teachers had respect and if you did anything to disrespect them you were the one that was shunned upon but now anything goes these days yeah yeah no, it's, it's a different world right yeah. and i didn't like the fact that i had no power um you know like that's the thing if i had to send a kid to detention i had to have a meeting with the parents and why why I did that, you know, and why I had the nerve, the gall to put little, you know, little Johnny, Johnny in, in, in dirty little jo- <laughs> badass Johnny, right? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> little Johnny, yeah. So I decided after that, I'm like, you know what, I had enough of this, and uh, and then I moved to Calgary, actually, and um, I joined a band. Can't remember the name of them now, but anyway, it was a band that I joined. Actually, it was the former members of um, uh, Joe Hick. It was actually what would become Joe Hick kind of oh, deal yeah. um so i i moved to calgary I've seen you got a place to stay um you know and then i started gigging around town i met amos actually for one of the first gigs i actually ever did it was at booker's booker's crab booker's Shack, down right? on uh, the fl- the flyover fourth fly fourth street flyover or exactly whatever it is. yeah yeah and i met amos there and because i was doing a gig with him and a sax player and uh and i had my upright bass and then amos was putting together the acoustic project and then went on from there so it was like i moved to calgary and all of a sudden it's like i got all these gigs and i got a gig with amos garrett so like you know this is a pretty totally cool so it was like okay i think i found i think i found a good spot here to settle down and making some money and making some money yeah. and and like i said that was 99 yeah so yeah. That was, that's when i moved to calgary it was 99 20 years ago buddy yeah yeah and then found my way down here 
which I'm even happier about, Lake Calgary, but, you know, there's nothing like the country. Southern Alberta it's is like just beautiful, community. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. I, I've lived all over, all over Alberta. And, uh, and you know, and not to take anything away from other places of Alberta, but Southern Alberta is, is, is beautiful. People are so friendly and, and so cool and accepting, yeah. you know what I mean? So it was, it was not a hard decision for me to call this my home. I can tell you that, you know, High River's been really good for me. Like, you know, I, I, just with employment, like with teaching and and playing, like, yep. you know, knee deep. I'm at knee deep every Wednesdays doing the yep. open mic there. Um, I come down and see you, but I can never stay long. I got to go to work the next right morning. On, yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Seven to ten. It's not late, though. It's not late hours. Seven to ten every Wednesday. So I'm just weak. I can't stay up that late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you came out a couple of times. Yeah, a couple me. of times. Then I yeah. got to shut her down, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's, um, that's how I find my way down here. So <laughs> I want to, and just one, one of my silly questions is how far has music taken you like on a tour? Have you gone to like Europe or other countries to play? Uh, funny you mentioned that. I've never played Europe. That's a, a bucket list yeah, cool. kind of thing. Uh, with this band, with Black Mountain, there it, there could be a possibility. There's some good potential there, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a potential. They I'm love not, they not, love uh, country western music, uh, hard like I don't know what we call it outlaw country. Yeah. They love outlaw country in Europe. Yeah, so there could be a possibility. I'm not going to get into details, but it could be a possibility. There has been yeah. you know names thrown around on you know who who could we go over there with and stuff like that. So that's kind of into works. So you, cool. like Europe is definitely on our on our radar um more specifically uh, getting back to your question um north i toured over north america quite a bit um a lot of canada like tons and tons of canada you've like seen I, most I, of most of I'm, canada i played every the only province i haven't played is uh tuck 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 i think you know up that way like that's yeah. that's about it uh, i played everywhere else uh in the states I uh, played Vegas, which was really cool. Oh, nice. You know, we opened up for uh, George Strait's uh, Smoking Aces. That was that was 2009. That was a really cool experience. And um, what uh, what barn did you sh play? The Mirage. The Mirage, nice. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah, that that was a really cool experience. Um, Were you able to party there a little bit too? Oh or God, was it all yes. Business? Oh no, it was it was it was a good time. As yeah. long as we, you know, that's the thing. As long as you got your shit little, together. It's a savage city, right? Don't tear you apart. <laughs> oh yeah, you got to watch. And of course, you know, in a casino, you don't know what time it is because there's no windows, right? No. So it's all of a sudden, it's like it's nine o'clock in the morning. You're sitting at a bar still, smoking and drinking. Jesus. It's like oh, time to get to bed, I guess. And as long as you got, that's one thing about being a musician. You know, you can do whatever you want the night before. Is make sure you got your shit together to be up on stage, and yeah. to do and to do your job. Um, the next night, it's that simple. Like, you know, what I mean? if you're drunk, if you're stoned, if you're sober, doesn't matter what state you're in, hungover, you still got to be able to do your job. That's the bottom line. I so. think the first time I met you, we talked about this over at Scotty's. This is like, wow, he's only been there for eight years, maybe. It's probably about eight years ago. Yeah. And I knew you before then, but we were bullshitting yeah. over there, we were talking about when you learned it, and, and you there might be an actual term for it when you learn to do something hungover or drunk or stoned or whatever state dependent learning state dependent, dependent learning. learning whatever state you're in right that's what you need to be in that state to do it again. to regurgitate it exactly yeah, yeah. and I, I, I studied that in psychology that, that's, that's that, why i'm that, good that at little... working hungover <laughs> i've done a lot of work state hungover. Dependent learning <laughs> it's like you know i found myself too in the stone cold country we're notoriously drunk and high all the time and um like tragically drunk and high like all the going time. hard oh we went hard yeah so hard all the time and um, <laughs> it's a wonderful life. State dependent learning. <laughs> and there'd be like I, after I left that band, and I go playing Calgary, and, and I, I was straight, like you know, completely straight. And I'm like, how come I can't remember that song? Because, because like, I was wasted. Blank. Because I was the last time I played, I was completely zonked, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. gone, like wasted out of it, right? So, yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, right. State dependent learning. Like I said, that that little tin bit of information cost me about five thousand dollars in university, kind of deal. But. Um, yeah, and, and that's true. I, it, but it, it's totally it's true. Totally, it, it totally it is. Totally right? is true. Man. You know, like when I when I learn off songs, like I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything, like I because I gotta be, you know, because I'm when I'm on stage these days. <laughs> uh, actually, for the last while, I've been sober, right? You so, know, you, you have to be sober, sober performing. You had to be sober performing. Afterwards, you know, you, you you give her, you do whatever you know, you gotta do, kind of deal to have a have a good time. But uh, you know. I'm also getting older too, so like you know the the days of those like big parties is like just not as tough as you were when you're you know, 25. Uh, that's eh? right, that's right. Oh, so, no, but like I said, bottom line, you gotta you gotta be up on that stage and 
and like when we were in Vegas, like we would party pretty good, but we always made sure that that we were, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Had enough rest and had yeah. your shit together and eating well. And, yeah. Especially when you go on, you played on a stage. You want human, to, you know, human factors. Yeah. Yeah. So like you know, like we played the uh, Country Thunder festivals as well, the one that's in Florence, Arizona, um, and uh, Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. Uh, so we did that as well, which was that pretty must cool. Must be near, near Green Bay somewhere. I think it is. Yeah. I think I've been. Wisconsin's there. really cool. Actually, we were staying. Cheese. Yeah. yeah. A lot of cheese. A lot of cheese. Yeah, Wisconsin cheese. Actually, we're staying in Chicago, which is an awesome city. So that was a lot of fun. That was really that was a lot of fun. Um, I yeah. think the traveling, getting to see all these different communities all over. North America must have been fantastic over the years. Absolutely, absolutely. Like it's that, like that's a, the thing. It's like a vacation, but not. It's like a work vacation, but you get a little bit of time to check local local things out and meet different people. I think it's awesome. Absolutely, it's. Uh, I try to I try to do that when I because I in my welding job I travel over the place, but it's tough when you're in a very remote place like Saskatchewan. Last year we were in a place called Crake. It was only maybe three hundred people live there. Right. One restaurant. Right. One gas station, one grocery store, and everything closes at 5.30. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty hard to make any friends. You get off work at 6. <laughs> but that is, yeah. that is so true, though. You, like music, like, you know, anyone who travels, like whether you're a trucker, like, you know. Yeah, anything. You know, Anybody well, that's well, got well, life on the road. On, right? Life on the road, yeah. You get to, it's cool. It's like you get to you get see the little microcosm of a life that that town has kind of deal, right? Um, and like, like I said, it's, it's uh, it's not a it's, it's a job, but at the same time, it's like you're you're getting paid to travel, and of course, like I mentioned to you before, like you're you know you got 22 hours during the day. You know you're on. You're and on. You got to work for two hours. The rest of the and, and the rest. rest of the day is free time. So like I know, um, and and musicians like you know we like to go out and see spots. Like we're not we, we always we lived in hotels our whole life. So like you know yeah, it, I, I got to get out of the hotel if you, I can. You, you know that's why I mean? winter time sucks. It's thirty below. You're not. What, you what are you gonna do? Yeah, and that's that's that so whole thing. So she's movie time. You watch a yeah. lot of movies. Yeah. But I just love exploring. You know. Um, towns and cities and stuff like that whether it's in the states or in canada it's it's just so cool it's you know of course going up south of the border it's you know americans are so different than canadians you know like even I, a mile south of the border they yeah completely i know change yeah you so get shelby go to shelby they can see each other right? yeah they're that close but yeah. it totally changes it's totally as soon as you uh -huh. cross the border like uh -huh. you know, sweet grass yeah. down there right it's like mm -hmm. going on to montana <laughs> <laughs> that's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh uh-huh yeah right unreal yeah thank you uh-huh right <laughs> yeah servers uh -huh. in montana right yeah. they, don't, they don't say you're welcome thank uh -huh. you uh-huh <laughs> totally i what love the fuck it fuck is uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> a john cougar record <laughs> <laughs> my one buddy went to uh oh it's just south of uh not yeah south of babs browning browning montana oh okay and he's from I don't know, like Longview or something, and he's visiting with these people down there. And this kid says, this like ten year old kid says, "Well, where are you, where are you from?" He says, "Well, Longview." He goes, "Oh, up in Canada." He goes, "The kid says to him, I by looking at you, I couldn't tell you're from Canada. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just couldn't tell." <laughs> oh man, I've been in the states too. Where was I? Texas. Uh, Where's Billy Bob's that town down there? Uh, Fort Worth. Oh, okay. Fort Worth, Texas. My buddy and I, Kale, we went and bought these big cowboy hats. And he bought this super big one. And it's like a sombrero you got made of this cowboy hat. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's mm -hmm. 10 times too big. And there's this cowboy who goes in there, and he's like, why? Y'all getting a big, that's a pretty darn big hat there, y'all. And he goes, where are y'all from? He said, and I go, well, because no one knows where High River is. But we mm -hmm. said, we're just south of Calgary. He goes, hmm, never heard of it. <laughs> the Calgary staff beat him. Yeah. Like, he's like, nope, never heard of it. But there yeah. you go. They got their own thing down there, man. Like, it, like that's the thing. It's, it's. Uh, you talk to them. Like we actually, we had um, on this recording, we had um, um, a guy from actually, he's originally from Minneapolis, Russ, great, great steel player, and Russ Paul is his name. And he lives in Nashville, and he's got that southern drawl, and 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 just like you know, like Rick Mercer used to say, talking to Americans, you know, they had that, that whole show. thing, right? You know what I mean? Best and show ever. And you only go, and he's from Minneapolis, and 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 the, you know, he doesn't knows nothing about Canada, right? You know, and, and that's that's the other thing too. It's like it's not even that the, far away. You know, you're that close to Canada. I can see, right? a, I can see mean? a Fort Worth, 
it's right. quite a yeah. ways away. Yeah, I can totally see that. But it's like, you know, like, um, and even some Americans don't even know, like, where they are. Like, in, I was in St. Paul, Minneapolis. Talking with Americans. Right. And I was... <laughs> um, uh, I was just outside having a, a you know, good old camel waiting blue for the cigarette. Air, waiting for an airplane. And uh, I was outside the uh, the bar, the hotel bar. And so this gentleman's like, hey, can I buy a cigarette off you? And I said, I said, no, you can have one, right? So he said, ah, oh, thank you. So he was from Carolines, Carolina. And so we, st- we, we started talking. And I said, I'm from Canada. And, oh, okay, right on. He didn't even ask me where, what part, because he, you know. He just, and then we started, I, and I said, yeah, I said, I said, I'm, then I, I kind of pushed the issue a bit, a little bit. And I said, well, I said, I'm, I'm from Alberta. He kind of looked at me, huh? And I said, oh, I said, Alberta's. Pardon? I said, it's <laughs> north of Montana. And he looked at me, he's like, where's Montana? Right? I, I, I've experienced this exactly and I went, the same thing. I said, he said, I'm from Carolina, man. Right? You know, kind of deal, right? Like, that's all, that's their world. That's it. Right? That's yeah. all this. And I said, and I explained to him, I said, okay, I said, it's the Northwest. Right now, here's a Canadian <laughs> explaining <laughs> geography to an American, right? You know yeah. what I mean? I said, you yeah. got the Dakotas, and I'm like, I'm going through it, right? You know what I mean? I said, you know, that borders Canada. You lost said, them you got, at North Dakota. You know what I mean? And I said, you got, then you got, right, there's Montana, and I, and I said, Washington, and he went, oh, yeah, the Northwest. And I said, yeah, the Northwest, that's what I just said, right? So <laughs> it's, it's so funny. The Pacific like, Northwest. And the, yeah, the, but, and yeah. Texas as well, like they got their own, like Texas is pretty much its own country. The Republic of Texas. You know what I mean? Kind it of really is right? in a lot of ways. So yeah. they only give a shit about Texas and nobody else. The Texans else. first, then Americans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. I like Texas. That's a happening place. Musicians love it too because you can play. I talk to uh, musicians who live down there and they don't, they don't even leave Texas. They don't have to. Yeah. They can just work in Texas. Right? Ray Wiley Hubbard. He's from down there. You know oh, him? Oh, yeah. And then the, uh, King Dave... Ah, doesn't matter. I can't remember, but yeah, there's some good, great music down there. That's yeah. the place. Oh, absolutely. Totally. There's something in the water in Texas. And look who came out of Texas, Buddy Holly. You know what I mean? I like, went you know, to that I, town, Lubbock or Lubbock. Yeah. Lubbock. Buddy, Ho- Buddy Holly Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so cool. Waylon, right? Who played bass with Buddy Holly? Like that's, yeah. There's something in the water in Texas for sure. What about? Uh... I want to talk guitars for a second because you obviously know about guitars. Mm-hmm. So I got those two old beaters there. Yep. Um, Dobros, and then what's happening in the? What kind of guitar do you play? Like, what's your what's your go to one? What's what's the one you like the best? Um, I right now like for guitars and for for bass, I use Gibson. Um, I have a Gibson. Uh, it's a Nashville model bass five string that I use. Um, I really like it. Um, and Are they I, made in Montana? Uh, yes, they're in Bozeman. Yeah. Bozeman. Yeah, Bozeman, okay. Montana. And I also have a 1968 J50 uh, Gibson. Uh, it's a beautiful guitar. I actually just retired it. I had to because it was, it was getting pretty beat up, like, you know, because I do solo stuff as well mm-hmm. in Calgary and around. So uh, I just picked up actually an Epiphone Dove. Um, real good guitar. So that's usually. My jam is usually Gibson Epiphone, like uh, that's for myself. Um, I was a Fender guy for years. Uh, I played on on their, I played you know predominantly their basses, like I, for years and years and used their amps and stuff like that. And then when it came time for me to hit them up, with you know when Chad started getting you know a bit bigger and stuff like, like hey, that. Yeah, man, and, give me a guitar. You know, kind of deal. Like, give me some stuff, and they, they basically said, you know, F- you know, Fender Canada is a redheaded stepchild. You know, kind of deal. Really? So like you know what I mean, and so like Fender USA is just the you know, so anyway, I, so I said all right, so I had to do a TV thing, so I shaved off <laughs> the name on the headstock, because <laughs> so I'm like no, like, you guys won't give me nothing, I'm not gonna give you nothing. <laughs> Put a black table, right? Put a piece yeah, of that's duct that's table pretty much what I did, yeah. right? So, yeah. but anyway, then I I went to Gibson, and I I do know some people in Gibson as well, but uh, the bottom line is the quality. It's that, that's why I, I like Gibson. So, and that's Was there a big it. change in ownership of the Gibson Guitar Company lately? I thought um, I heard something happen. Yeah, they said they were going to went, go kind of went, bankrupt or something like that. Somebody um, stepped in and maybe helped them out or purchased it? Or? I haven't heard. It's been pretty quiet ever since, like, you know, mm. kind of deal. So I just can't see a company that's been around for so long to have like, like that and to make such great instruments to have financial problems. Somebody... Dropped the ball Somebody somewhere, right? So, Somebody fucked up. Yeah, big Absolutely. time. Absolutely. All right, well, let's uh, let's take a break. All right. All right, so 
up and coming shows or ba- other bands you're playing with, other tours you're playing with, other than the Black Mount or Black Mountain Whiskey Rebellion, is there other other things in the near future happening with you, Greg? Yes, uh, I'm also proud to say that I'm playing with Clayton Bellamy in the Congregation now as well. That's the other gig that I have. Um, like I said, very incestuous because Clay wrote some of the stuff on this on this record and you know was a singer on Holy Smoke. And, so I'm doing some stuff with him. We, I think we got Stampede. We're doing, uh, actually with Black Mountain 2, we got Stampede stuff coming up. Um, I'm playing in Burlington, Ontario here at the beginning of June. That's with Black Mountain. I can't remember who we're opening up for, but it's like a rock festival, actually. Nice. Uh, and Clay, we got a festival in Red Deer, uh, west of Red Deer. I, I can't remember it because it's, it's this is brand new kind of deal, right? Sylvan um, Lake or something? It's uh, No, it's... Um, I can't remember the name of the festival. Anyway, it's a festival that's, that's west of Red Deer. Clayton is doing that um, with us. And, and, and in, in the band, and Clayton's band is Corbett Fraz on drums. You know, so it's the same rhythm section as Black Mountain. Cool, kind of deal, cool. Right? So. What, uh, I was just thinking, like, there's so much music that I listen to because I listen to a lot of Americana, a lot of outlaw country that you don't hear on Canadian radio stations. Mm-hmm. I hear a lot of my music on Channel 60, like on satellite radio, but why do you think we don't, has it got something to do with Canadian content, or is it, why a lot of those Americana or outlaw country songs don't make it to mainstream radio in Canada? Is, is there a reason why? Or CRTC. Just, yeah, okay. Right. You know, they, they regulate, there's regulations and shit like that, right, so... Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's like... You know, like, like, there's so much good music that... Mm-hmm. I've been playing for years, and a yep. lot of people do, but you just don't hear on the radio up here. No, that's right, and, and that's and, and that's the other thing too. Like Canadian radio, is it a piss off for everybody, or is it just a piss off for people from the states that want exposure up here, or is it or is it a good thing for the Canadian artists that that so they can have airtime for them too? Um, I I don't think Americans are pissed off because they got the yeah, their market. Their market huge. is used. They don't yeah. need us, right? No, you know for what I mean? sure. They don't need us at all, right? You know, so um, it's a drop in the bucket. You know, and I guess the thing is, like now, before, like we have, you know, ways of of downloading music now and getting music from all over the world. Whereas before, you had to go out and actually physically buy when, the record. When it was right? you know when it mean? was just the radio and records, right? That was a yeah, that was your two options, or you had to go listen to it live somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Now I can have it downloaded on my phone in 10 seconds. It's, it's a, it's a Bluetooth change. Bluetooth it in your truck. That's right. Oh, it's, it's incredible. That's, that's right. So. It's, uh, it's uh, people that love music right now, it's probably some of the best times ever because it's, 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 it's accessible yep. beyond your wildest imagination. Like it's, it, You can have it now. Yeah, and, and what's cool is, as well is, is like Chris Chataway will come in um, cause he plays it, you know, in a band and, and they're always learning off indie stuff, indie artists. I'm like, who is this guy? Like for, you know, and he's like, Oh, that's da, 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 da. An, an unknown right? independent artist from somewhere, not around here. Right. Yeah. You know, like that, uh, Tyler child is Tyler Chal- Tyler he's Chal- awesome. He Isn't actually, he's, something? he's opening up for John Prine right now. John Prine's on a, on a big world tour. Yeah. He was just in Australia. Good for, good on you, John Prine. I absolutely Oh, Tyler, John Prine. Oh, Tyler is opening up for, for John, for John. Prine. Nice. Right. So it's like, and you know, was it White House wrote that song? It's a great yeah. tune, and and I'm like, listen to the lyrics, and I'm like, you know, so it was all about. It's like those guys are just stealing all the rich folks uh, stuff, <laughs> oh, yeah. delivery p- packages, right, kind of deal. <laughs> and I love that line. We've been sniffing that cocaine, right? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. um, but yeah, like, like for him, for example, like you know, what a great songwriter. But you never, that, you would never hear him on the radio. That guy, I right? just heard of him maybe a year ago. But never on a Canadian radio station. No, exactly. But he's on fire. He is really, really, really good. Right. Now, we're getting back to the whole thing, too, with, with radio trackers and right. stuff like that as well, right? You know what I mean? So, um, But like I said, the, you know, they have their radio trackers down in the States, which is why that, that's, that's why it gets put on up there. Yeah. Uh, you know, down there, I mean, it gets put on the station. But, yeah, yeah here's, it, here's different, you know. We've always been kind of... Is it is this... Is it CRTC or whatever? Is it is it doing any favors these days, or is it pretty much just I don't spinning think so. its wheels? Yeah, out? they they try and act like a watchdog, but you know, like the, those assholes are responsible for. Like I remember listening to a song on the radio. I'm like, where's the bridge? Like the, an entire bridge of a song got chopped out for 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 time content, right? Right. So those assholes are because they're on because the, they're on the clock yeah. for some reason, right? Can't you just and let I, the I, song play? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's like I know it's like you know it's like 
a classic 80s rock song or something that I've, you know, listened to my whole life. And I was like, you just missed that I soul. Missed it. Yeah. You, you, why, did you, why did you chop that out? Like, who are you? <laughs> who the hell are you? <laughs> Wait one minute here. Right? Yeah. To chop someone else's art. And that's what you're doing. Right, you know what I mean? Like they're they, in there. If, it's like they're fiddling with your drink. Yeah, when exactly. I like my drink the way I, ha- I like my drink. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the CRTC. They fuck themselves, actually. That's good. <laughs> That's good. All right. Uh, now I know. Now I know. Um, just, I'd like to just give me a give me your gut feeling on some local guys that you know that are, you think are going places that we haven't heard of, I haven't heard of. Just a couple. Just a couple. Local guys, or, or not even local guys, they can be from anywhere, but something to, something that I can go check out after the interview and, and other people can check it out, like somebody that you think nobody's heard of, but let's give them a go. Well, I, I got to put a, a plug in for Gratuitous Platypus. Oh, I've uh, heard of them, but I, I don't yeah. know any of their I, I teach um, Stellar. Nolan is, is the ah, uh, yes. bass player and lead singer in that band. And they're High River Right boys, and, and you know they're they're slowly starting to... Get there. Bart, to, Chad they, Barton told me about those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah, slowly yeah. starting to make a little bit of waves. You know what I mean? They got uh, ma- major minor music. I do believe is is backing them up in Calgary. Um, you know, they just did a big show at Mac Hall. They, you know, the first like you know, I, like I told Stellar, you just you just did your first show. I said you you can't call, and I don't mean that be, you know, like being an asshole, but it's like a, you were actually on stage. There was techs. You had monitors. There was lights. There was you know, thousand people or whatever was there. Yeah. And there was tickets. That's a show. When you when you go to a go to a bar, it's a gig. That's a gig. That's a gig. There's a gig a, and a show is two different things. Totally different. So I told him that. I said, you know, congratulations. You just did you your first show. You finally did your first you, show. You did you, your first show kind of deal, yeah. right? And so I, I checked those guys out um, at the venue here in town, right? Um, that was last year, I do believe, when they were. And I, I like, you know, they they got a real rock and roll attitude. Um, you can't put a kind of pressure on young guys like that to tell them we're going to be stars and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they're, you know, they're doing it for all the right reasons. They just love doing it, you know, and that's, that's what it comes down to. That's perfect. You yeah. know, so, um, yeah. So check out Gratuitous Platypus. Like I, I really, you know, I have I their will. record. Yeah. They, they gave me their record strictly at a guilt cause I teach stellar. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but no, like that. And that's exciting because it's exciting for high river because, as we talked about before, the flood kicked our ass big time. Yeah. It really kicked our ass. And we're still rebuilding, yeah. right? You know what I mean? And like I said, and, and music, this this town was full of music. It's why I moved here. It's rocking, man. And then all of a sudden there's nothing, and which is another reason why I'm doing the open mic at Knee Deep on Wednesdays. I'm, I'm trying to do my part. Absolutely. And, and to kickstart it again kind of deal, right? And, uh, and, there's good, and there's other jams that are starting to happen now. There's other, you know, like Adam at Knee Deep is awesome. Um, he supports live entertainment, you know, to the hilt. So he brings in, you know, he had Jay Burns there last night. Jay is awesome. It was a good house. Um, so it's a really good live entertainment venue, knee deep. And, and we need we needed that for so long, right? We lost it. We, yeah, you know we, we lost it when we lost Gitters, I think. We, and, and yeah, yeah the, the Roadhouse. Like, and the Roadhouse, like too, it, yeah. The list goes on, right? You know what I mean? I like, miss those Thursday nights at Gitters. Oh, man. Go down there, yeah. get loaded. Or Dudley's. Be hung over, be hung over for Friday yeah. morning work. Yeah. My jam was always Dudley's. I really like... Uh, Dudley's was awesome. You know, yeah. thank you, Deb. God rest your yeah, soul, right? Absolutely. You know, like it was... Uh, it was awesome. Back I just when loved. You could smoke too. Oh, eh? go walk in there with the smoke eaters that were never working, <laughs> right? And it was, it just was a, terrible. <laughs> in there. I remember singing like, you know, <laughs> you know, got a deal. Take like, your like, breath away going in there. <laughs> but I loved, I loved Dudley's. It was yeah, so cool. Me too. Like, and, and it, it was everyone. If you wanted to find anyone, all you had that's, to do was go to Dudley's at five o'clock on a Friday. That's where it used to be. Right. All the yeah, all know? the action. Right. Or or any day of the week. Go there. You know, oh, everyone was in there having a drink. The gateway to the gut. I yeah. remember the gut. The old gut. If yeah. You burnt down, eh? Yeah. That was sad. I miss that place. Too. I've I prefer a gateway over what it is now. I can tell you that right now. That's for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was so. as an honest place. It was a working man's bar too. You could go there it for was. lunch and have a steak sandwich and a couple beers. And yeah. You could walk in there with your work boots on and dirty and. Yeah, it's proper. Yeah, not many places like that anywhere left. Yeah, it's true. Not just here; they they kind of they fell off the they fell off the side mm-hmm. all over the place. So yeah. Okay, buddy. Well, I think that's it for today. Cool. Thanks a lot. That Thanks, was, Alberta. That was great. I appreciate you making the effort to come on over here. So. Absolutely, man. Anytime. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Black Mountain Whiskey Rebellion. There we go. And 
Very, very handsome man right there. <laughs> That's me. That's me. <laughs> All right. <laughs>